One of the things that make railways so interesting is that wherever you go in the world they are completely different, from train designs to infrastructure right down to the rules governing their operation. Knowing a bit about these differences is a great way to look at how things can be done better, but the average person usually just assumes that their local system is normal. If you've grown up in Melbourne, you'll know that trains whistle a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. In all sorts of situations, often very loud. <coughs> very loudly and very frequently. But what you might not know is that not all railway systems are like this, not even elsewhere in Australia. Victorian trains whistle far more often than trains in most other states, and way more than in many other countries. In this video I'm going to talk about why trains here whistle as often as they do, and what we could maybe learn from other less whistly parts of the world. Before I dive into that, a quick note on terminology. The actual device that makes the sound on modern trains is called an air horn, and the average person on the street is most likely going to say the train blew its horn. However, the word whistle is still widely used in the railways, a term dating from the steam days, and that's what I'm mostly going to call it in this video. Okay, so trains in Victoria are required to whistle in a number of specific situations. The most common ones are before starting to move, under any circumstance, before entering a tunnel, before running express through a station, twice on approach to a level crossing, firstly when passing the whistle post. These are located roughly 400 metres before each crossing, and again just before passing over the crossing. When approaching track workers on or near the line, and importantly, as required, which can be anything from sounding a warning to a person or vehicle behaving dangerously, right down to the important task of greeting small children. Now, the Melbourne suburban area is well known for having a lot of level crossings, far more than any other Australian city. The current state government is working pretty hard to get rid of 110 of these in the form of the level crossing removal project, but even once that's complete there will still be something like 70 level crossings in the metropolitan area. So imagine you live somewhere about here, between Dennis and Fairfield stations on the Hurstbridge line. In the one kilometre stretch of line nearest your house, every train will whistle approximately six times, give or take, with some variation between drivers. First for the Victoria Road whistle post, then for Dennis Station, then Victoria Road itself, then the same pattern for Fairfield and Station Street. This section has a mixture of stopping and express trains, and while both are required to whistle the same overall number of times, stoppers when departing the station and expresses just before passing through, Express trains travelling at speed will often whistle longer for level crossings, for obvious reasons. In addition to that, if an express train finds itself passing another train in close proximity to a crossing, they will often whistle continuously right up to the crossing, as this is a high risk situation for people and vehicles dodging the boom gates. Roughly 150 trains pass through here every day, which adds up to about 900 whistles, which is roughly every 80 seconds on average during the 20 hours each day in which trains are normally operating. Obviously this is just one example, but it's typical of lots of places around Melbourne. Now, it just so happens that one of my childhood friends did live somewhere along here, in fact they had a whistle post right next to their back fence. Like most people who live near a rail corridor, they said that after a short time of living there, they didn't even notice the trains going past anymore. It just became part of the background soundscape they listened to every day. So it's all fine, right? Before I answer that, let's take a quick look at how it works in some other places. Up in Sydney, whistles are used far less often. This is partly just because Sydney has hardly any level crossings. I can count the ones in the suburban area on the fingers of one hand. Sydney drivers also only whistle once for level crossings. They don't whistle before passing express through a station, and the requirement to whistle when the train starts moving was scrapped a few years ago. This basically leaves entering a tunnel as the most common reason to whistle, but even that doesn't apply in every case, as some inner city tunnel entrances have a no whistle sign aimed at reducing urban noise pollution. Having a quick look overseas, I've spent a total of about three months in Europe travelling by train virtually every day, and during that time barely heard a single train whistle. As far as I'm aware, no Western European countries require a whistle when beginning to move, and many don't require it for tunnels. Most only require a whistle for a level crossing if it has no active protection, that is, no lights or bells, just a sign. The British are a bit more whistle happy than Europe, but still far below Victorian levels 
and they actually have a designated quiet period late at night where reduced whistle use is allowed. New Zealand has also taken steps to reduce whistle use in recent decades, eliminating the whistle on departure, and they even have some level crossings which don't sound bells at night. Meanwhile, there are certainly plenty of places where trains do whistle more than us. I've never been to North America, but in many places trains whistle a lot on approach to level crossings, like almost constantly for about 20 seconds. Many North American systems also require the use of a bell when moving through platforms and yards. And while this replaces the role of the whistle in some instances, the pros and cons of this practice are pretty similar. And all other examples pale into insignificance when you see how trains use their horns in India. I wasn't able to get permission to use any footage from there, but if you do a search for it, you won't be disappointed. Okay, so it's clear that the railway world at large has no consensus on how much whistle is too much or not enough. So should Melbourne's trains whistle less? Firstly, let's look at the safety issue. The entire reason trains whistle is to warn people of the train's approach and reduce the risk of accidents. So can you reduce whistle use without making the railway less safe? Well, there's a pretty good argument that whistling less can actually improve safety. And here's why. Remember how I said my friends living next to the whistle post didn't even notice the trains anymore? It's a basic boy who cried wolf situation. The train whistle is a warning device, and when it's used constantly, people get used to it. It isn't alarming anymore. If a train is approaching level crossing and already whistling like it always does, there's nothing left in the armory to provide a bigger warning if somebody actually steps out onto the track. Sure, you can whistle longer, but it's still not an unusual sound likely to get somebody's attention. Most trains do have a quiet and a loud horn, but the loud one gets used by default in most situations. This has actually been thought about with Melbourne's trams, which normally use their moderately polite bell to alert people to their movements. But the modern trams also have a loud horn, which is attention grabbing in an emergency, largely because it's not part of the normal city soundscape like the bells are. To be clear, I'm not suggesting Melbourne trains shouldn't whistle at all, but I do think the whistle would be a much more valuable warning device if its use was less frequent. For level crossings and running express through stations, I reckon it should be safe for situations where a person or vehicle is actually in a position of danger, or looks as if they might be about to do something stupid. Let's remember that just about every crossing in the suburbs is fitted with lights and bells anyway, so there's already significant warning that a train is approaching. Whistling when passing another train just before a crossing is probably a good practice to continue given the serious potential for danger in that situation. As for whistling when the train starts to move, let's definitely get rid of that. Virtually everywhere else in the world no longer does it. It's a bit of a relic from the time when trains didn't have power operated doors and there were much more likely to be people standing near the train at ground level. I don't see it as serving any real purpose today, with the exception of stations that have a passive pedestrian crossing close to the platform. So the other reason you might want to reduce whistle use is for the benefit of those people living right beside the line. Now, whenever this gets discussed, people always immediately jump on if you don't like the sound of the trains, then you shouldn't have moved next to the railway. And look, there's some value to that argument, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't consider ways to improve things for people living line side. And if we want more people to live close to public transport, improving the urban soundscape can only be a good thing. Something else to consider is that whistles have changed over time. If you bought a house near a level crossing in the late 90s, you would have had mostly Comengine Hitachi trains with RVB three chime horns. Now, this is purely subjective, but I think the chord played by these horns sounds quite nice, and to me it's a classic part of the Melbourne soundscape. From 2002, extrapolis trains start running on the network, which have a very abrupt and loud single note horn, which I think is a much more annoying sound. There is currently a program to replace the extract whistles with a slightly softer sounding model, but it's still an abrupt single note. The Clifton Hill and Burnley groups of lines are now 100% operated by extrapolis trains, so our hypothetical 90s homeowner now has a completely different sound rolling over their back fence 900 odd times a day than when they first moved in. And if you live on a line with country trains, the last 20 years has seen a transition from most trains sounding like this, to whatever sound this is. So I think it's fair to say people don't always know what they're signing up for long term when they choose to live near the line. And let's not forget, there's a housing crisis going on out there, and many people have very limited choice about where they can live in the first place. 
So once you're aware of other examples around the world, it's clear that Victorian trains do whistle a lot. As an enthusiast, I kind of like it, but from a more social point of view, I do think it's worth having a discussion about whether reducing whistle use could actually have safety benefits, as well as improving quality of life for the railway's neighbours. It's really just about giving more discretion to train drivers about when a warning is required, rather than having these hard situational rules. As a final note, there's one common situation where whistling definitely serves no purpose whatsoever. It happens in several places, but a great example is at Eltham. At the down end of the station is the Diamond Street level crossing. The whistle post for Diamond Street is here, on the other side of the station. Now, first of all, Eltham is a crossing loop in the middle of a single track section, so nearly every train has to stop in the platform and wait for another train, often with waits of 5 minutes or more. There are no timetabled expresses, so even without a cross, every in-service train stops at the station. On top of that, around half of all trains terminate at Eltham and return to the city, so all these trains are required to whistle at the whistle post, regardless of the fact that most will not depart towards the crossing until several minutes afterwards, and half of them won't cross it at all. Some drivers do use discretion and don't whistle here, but most do. A simple fix for this would be to make a version of the whistle post that applies to express trains only, and there are lots of other stations with crossings right next to them that would benefit from this too. Anyway, whistles can be fun, but I do think they could serve a much better purpose in Victoria with a few tweaks to the rules. Thanks to RM Transit who kindly provided footage from the other side of the world for this video, and thanks for watching.